Hey, a couple of quick notes before it happens today's episode of the podcast. Want to let everybody know lobolsrier.com is available. You can sign up for the newsletter there, or you can go to podcast.lobolsrier.com. Both places, basically the same place. The podcast is the podcast specific website. Lovable Survivor has a little bit more info, more details of things to come. Again, you can sign up for the newsletter in both places, whichever is easier for you. What else? This week I talk about the Burt cast, which is Burt Kreischer, his podcast on YouTube and his podcast is great. Really like the Dane Cook episode, Liver King. Brandon Novak just came out. That's a great episode as well. Highly recommend those. Also, Entourage. I don't know why. I felt like I should go back in time. And I guess because I watched Sopranos and Suits recently, just felt like going back a little bit further in time. So Entourage on HBO Max is pretty cool. Been enjoying that. Reliving those days. Finally, Hub dot lovable survivor.com again i'll put a show a link in the show notes hub dot lovable survivor.com i am now open for basically there's three phone calls there are free phone calls for survivors i do a couple of those a month offering either a 55 minute a call one time option or two 55 minute calls as a package deal hopefully you'll check those out anyways let's all right, let's hop into today's episode 22 of the Global Survivor Podcast, and let's go. Good morning, everybody. My name is Will Schmier, and welcome back to another episode of the Global Survivor Podcast. Today is July 7th, 2023, and I'm back for episode 22. The power of asking why or why not. Yeah, let's get into today's episode, but before we do, let's talk about a couple of fun things. It is Friday, July 7th. It's a little bit later in the week than usual. I am recording the day I'm going to release, which is also very unusual for me. It's the summer. Let's be honest. It's harder to do things. My boys, I said, are getting older. My daughter is out of town, moving out of Clemson getting ready to go to her next school this fall. So we got a lot of things going on. Very busy summer. Honestly, I want to be better about recording ahead of time. I was, but the summer has caught me off guard. I don't think I'm alone in that situation. I think all parents every year, doesn't matter how long you've been doing this. Yeah, life gets off track. Things get confused. Thing, yeah. Let's be honest. Everybody in my house is getting older and I'm realizing I should have bought a smaller house so that I could justify having an office in the backyard or down the street in an actual office because I've been working from home for a really long time, but I got to be honest, I wouldn't mind having my own space nearby, just a little bit more money. <laughs> like It's not something I need, but I desperately want. Because this house, I don't think it matters if you have a basement or not, but in Florida, basements are not very common, so I just can't find a quiet space. And it's okay most of the time, but it's really annoying when I'm trying to do a podcast or I'm really trying to think, and it's the summertime. It is super freaking annoying, if I'm being honest. And to be honest, too, I'd like to start recording the podcast because I have some news I'll share later today, but I'd like to start filming the podcast on top of just recording. That being said, let's hop into today's into today's episode. Really, you know, this seems obvious, but asking yourself why or why not? And I think that's super important when you're on the path to rebuilding, you know, whether it's rebuilding after stroke or brain injury finding new things, finding new hobbies, new ways to live life. I mean, there is a lot, as we discuss on every episode, there's a lot of things to cover when it comes to stroke, brain injury, honestly, any major medical life event. It really is not easy. Not everybody understands it. Some people do because they've been through something similar. Some people think they understand you know, and people do want to be helpful and people are very helpful most of the time, but sometimes you just really need to get to the root for yourself and ask yourself, 
why am I doing this? Does it make, you know, sense in a lot of ways financially? You know, is it fun for you? Is it, do you want to have fun? Is that part of your brand? Um, you know, and this is something you could do by yourself. There's lots of journaling exercises. You could just take notes and reassess. There are lots and lots of ways to ask yourself why. But never underestimate the power of asking yourself why. Or my favorite really is why not? Like, what, just because now I'm 40, I can't do certain things? Okay, that's fair. If I'm asking why and there is a real limitation I'll give you an example, like 2020, right after my stroke, I couldn't run. So, I mean, simply asking myself, why can't I run? Well, because I'm in a wheelchair. Okay, that is a reasonable and fair explanation. I'm not rationalizing. It's just, it is true. It doesn't mean it's true forever. It means it's true at that time. And again, these are things we've talked about asking yourself why or why not. and you know, have working towards small goals. I think for me, do, working, starting small and building up works better. Some people work better with a long-term vision and, you know, whatever that progress towards that looks like for you. But yeah, I mean, um, I just, I've been thinking about it a lot because I've been doing a lot of thinking over the July 4th kind of weekend. It was, I, I don't know, maybe you all have different schedules, but I feel like it's the first time in a while that I've really, it's a nice little break th this year, the way the year works out, the way July 4th falls on a Tuesday. I took that Monday off for me. I mean, I was doing stuff, but it was nothing super important. I certainly was not on the phone all day. I did hang out with the family over the weekend. So like I just utilized that time because I felt like a lot of people, at least here in the States, were taking a four day weekend. And it's a good time for me. I found it to be a very helpful reset. And I was doing a lot of thinking like I usually do throughout the week, but I feel like something shifted and I can't quite put my finger on it. Maybe I really just got into a newer level of thinking and really just kind of asking myself why or why not. And I'll be honest, some of the things that I'm going to talk about later in the episode, some of the recommendations I got into, which we could talk about now. I got into a couple of different things. I got into watching a lot of Burke Kreischer and his podcast episodes because I want to learn from the best who I think are the best right now. Like, I know a lot of people love Joe Rogan and Huberman and a lot of podcasts. And I love a lot of podcasts, but Bert is, to me, very relatable. He went to FSU. I went to Miami. There are similarities I see between the both of us. I obviously, I am not the machine, but we don't have to get into it today. But I have kind of a similar story. We both went to college in Florida. He went a little bit longer than most people. I also went a little bit longer than some people, although my program was a five-year program. I just see a lot of similarities, and I like what Bert's done in his career. I admire it. He always tries to have fun. He's super honest. He has no filter. You know, and I honestly, I've watched a couple, a bunch of episodes catching up on some of his stuff because I've always liked his comedy. I, I've enjoyed it at least since, you know, really 2019, 2020. When I saw The Cabin, I've seen some of his specials before, but I'll be honest, I think Bert has really come into his own the last four or five years. More, more so, I mean, he's always been around, but I think he's kind of gotten to that next level. So I do, you know, I relate. To his story a lot. And he's just a cool dude. I mean, I don't know personally, um, but I've been watching a lot of episodes of the Birdcast and just really kind of love what he's doing. You know, a couple of episodes that I'm going to point out to you that I really enjoyed were, I mean, I enjoyed them all. Like Eliza was a great episode. Sarah Silverman. I mean, I love the. His, he, you know, Bert has a wife and two daughters, so I very much relate to how he operates. And prior to my stroke, I was a lot like Bert, where I loved drinking, 
had a good time with it for me. You know, I watched another episode just that just came out yesterday with Brandon Novak, which I relate to a lot because addiction, you know, my major addiction was alcohol previously prior to my stroke, which Bert obviously, you know, talks a lot about and sort of, you know, I don't, again, I don't know him personally, but I feel like, I don't know if it's a struggle for him because I think he can stop at any point, just like I always could, but I definitely used to enjoy it a lot and, but I also used to get my stuff done. So I think there is some, there's something there, but I totally relate to him. Re- really related to the Brandon Novak story. You know, if you don't know Brandon Novak, he was part of Bam Margera's crew back in the day. Those guys were all in Jersey. I, I think I was already down in Miami, but I knew of that world and that crew. And obviously I used to be a big MTV guy in the early 2000s or late 90s and early 2000s. So I definitely relate being on Inside Edition myself for underage binge drinking at age 20. Back in 2002, this, you know, Jersey Shore, Viva La Bam, all these wild and crazy things. I think that was a lot of the 2000s across the board, but definitely if you were on the East Coast, especially if you were in New York, New Jersey, I think, you know, I can relate to a lot of those stories that a lot of people share. And part of Bert is obviously he went to FSU again. I went to Miami. So even though I left the Northeast and went to Florida, I'm not born and raised in Florida, but I have a lot of ties to Florida and just kind of that lifestyle and upbringing. So again, really interesting stuff, you know, but I'll talk about, I'll talk about that more. So anyways, let's hop back into this episode. The, you know, embracing your why and asking yourself these questions about why or why not. And what's brought this on is I feel like this week. I personally have been doing a lot of thinking about the direction of things I still want to do in my life at age 40. As a survivor, I feel fortunate and very lucky to have, you know, had the introduction to the power of asking myself why for the last couple of years, being introduced to, being introduced to that and really taking hold of my recovery. I th- I think a lot of survivors sort of understand eventually that you are in control of your life and, you know, there is no magic pill. It's very frustrating to go through stroke recovery, especially if you've been left with deficits because, again, the work that you're doing to improve and get back to the way you were isn't always linear. It is in fact very much the opposite. It is just, it's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of guess and check. It's a lot of asking why, how could I get better? Is this the most important thing that I could do for my recovery right now? You know, and that varies from person to person, time to time. And I think it's easy to get caught up in a world where you see other people doing different things. It might be other survivors local to you. It might be other survivors online. And it's really hard to keep the blinders on from just a stroke perspective, but also a life perspective, because I think we all see people doing things that we either want to do or think we should already be at this certain level. And it's hard. Sometimes you get sidetracked. Sometimes you get wrapped up in what somebody else is doing instead of what you're doing. I mean, at least for myself, I feel like I'm getting better at keeping myself in check and I'm keeping those blinders on and I'm being, you know, good about having smaller goals for me to build up that momentum and build up that resilience so that I can keep, you know, keep the ball rolling in a positive direction. But again, this is not easy stuff. So again, the power of asking yourself, why do I want to do this? Do I want to get better? You know, it's not that simple, but it is that simple because that asking yourself why or why not just, it just, you keep asking yourself questions, you keep building, you keep discussing and you keep going for it until you're, you know, towards that goal that you want to be at. And then you reassess again. 
And again, I think when it comes to why, the other important thing is focusing on you and yourself and your recovery. It is great to bounce ideas off other people. It's great to surround yourself with other people who are either going through the same thing or just people that you trust and love. However, at the end of the day, their opinions and their reasons may be very different from yours. So remember when you're asking why, especially as somebody else, take a moment to process that and internalize it and see if what they're saying aligns with what you're saying and take the time. It's okay if what they're saying doesn't match up with what you want or what you think. I'm not saying toss it to the side. I'm just saying simply, you know, take it for what it is. <clears throat> Which kind of, you know, can lead to, honestly, kind of that next step is where you're starting to overcome your own fears and limitations because your fear of judgment from others this is, again, not an easy one and definitely an ongoing thing, especially for a survivor, because when you're asking people who maybe you haven't been through exactly the same situation, even other survivors might have a very different story and a very different take. So there are going to be some common limitations and fears that hold you back from pursuing your goal, but continuing to ask why or why not is a really important, like, I wouldn't call it a skill, but it is almost a skill because here's the thing. You know, I'm doing this podcast now for survivors. I really want to help other survivors who are struggling, who are going through this, who are having a difficult time. Maybe they don't have access to, to, to different networks, you know. I have to do a better job of reaching out to other survivors because I don't know that other survivors are necessarily as open as I am and willing to really go out and find these answers, but they might certainly be looking for them. And so that's an area where I ask why or how can I do, how can I be better about the certain things, you know? And that's why I share my experience because it may not help millions of people. Like, obviously, I think like if you're if you're taking a broader look at this and podcasts in general, there's millions of podcasts on how to be an entrepreneur and everybody's got their take on how to be an entrepreneur and how to be the best entrepreneur and how to systemize things and how to be more productive and blah, 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 blah. That's great. I mean, they all have value of some kind. I mean, I don't like most of them, but that's me. You might enjoy them. Same thing with stroke. A lot of, there are, don't seem to be a lot of survivors sharing their story, at least in a podcast format. So sharing my experiences, I hope is maybe just even a little bit helpful. It doesn't have to be the exact path. I don't even want you to follow my path because I can tell you following my path will get you in the wrong place very quickly. But high level. You know, asking yourself why or why not when you want to be able to do something as a survivor. Again, I'll go back to that walking thing like, you know, okay, I can't walk. You're one for my recovery because I was in a wheelchair. It just was a fact, right? And then I got out of the wheelchair and I slowly started to progress. Now, I didn't go right into running because that's ridiculous, but I built up over time. And again, I've been running for nine months now. We're about three and a half years into my stroke recovery, and I'm, I'm still not a great runner. I don't even want to be a great runner, but I do want to be better because I would like to just run the same amount of mileage and just do it in a little bit less time every day so that I think ideally for me, running becomes a little, you know, I don't want to say easier because I don't need it to be easier, but I would like it to take a little less time in my day because I'd love to just go run for two hours and run. 10 to 15 miles a day. I mean, 15's on the high end, but again, I just want to get like a little bit better. And by better for me, I mean a little bit faster just in terms of overall time. I'm not trying to be your break records. I'm not trying to win medals. I'm not trying to run the Boston Marathon. I mean, I wouldn't mind, but like, yeah, I mean, again, sharing my experience, I just want to inspire other people to know that they can they can get back to that or they can get to it if they've never been a runner and they want to get into running. Again, share my experience. I'm just, 
I have no fear when it comes to sharing my mistakes, my hardships, my failures. You know, I want to share the good, the bad, the the ugly. I mean, I have my whole life. That's sort of something I felt very strongly about because I'm six foot eight, 325 pounds. There are not a lot of people like me just from that perspective. Then you add on that. I'm now a stroke survivor at the age of 40. Pretty rare. I have MS also pretty rare in a, especially in a male under 40 to be diagnosed at the age of 37, even more rare. You know, I don't want to just pile on myself the things that I have, but I've dealt with addiction with alcohol a little bit with drugs, although not nearly as severe as it was with alcohol. Drugs was more back in my 20s. You know, and thankfully, I never really had to deal with super hard. I mean, I guess I dealt with all kinds of drugs, but I was never like, I, I thank God, you know, and I've heard horror stories of heroin and pills. Thankfully, never had to deal with that. But on the flip side, I've dealt with having a stroke at a young age having MS, like it's, it's a lot. And, you know, people often tell me I'm a lot and yeah, I am. I mean, there's a lot of things I've done in my life. I've lived a pretty, I'm fortunate to be alive. I have lived a pretty privileged life, but I've also, you know, in, in fairness, I've had a lot of things handed to me on the flip side that are not the greatest. Like nobody wants to have a stroke. Nobody thinks I'll ever have a stroke. Nobody thinks I'll have a stroke at the age of 37. I mean, just an aside here, I was talking about Birdcast and his episode with Brent Novak, again from Viva La Bam crew, the Bam Margera crew back in the day. Brent Novak was on drugs for a really long time, especially during those years, and now he's clean and sober. And I really like that episode because Bert is a comedian by trade. You know, Brandon was on Viva La Bam, so they've both been in showbiz to some degree, but it's just a really interesting conversation and and a powerful one. And a lot of credit to Bert because he's honestly, he interviews a ton of comedians, but he's got gotten some regular guests, uh, you know, people like Brandon Novak, who was in show business, but kind of messed up pretty good. It's very, he's very fortunate to, as well. Again, listen to that podcast episode or watch it on YouTube with Bert. It's the newest episode, <clears throat> but it's really powerful stuff. Brandon's a really interesting guy. I'd love to kind of, <laughs> honestly, I don't really, I mean, I know what he's doing from the, he's running sober houses and he's really kind of making a difference. And I really relate to him because he grew up in that Northeast area. He think he's out of Philly. So he's from that Philly, Jersey, New York area where I'm originally from. And it's just really interesting. And, uh, you know, I'm going to try to listen to more episodes and listen back to the one with Bert. But I think what's really interesting is that he, you know, was really, he, he got into pills. He got into heroin. He's very lucky to be alive. He's grateful and he's now giving back, which is kind of how I feel a little bit with my stroke recovery and kind of the reasons for starting this podcast is really to just, man, if I just had a, like, I had nobody when I went through my stroke, like there were people at the physical rehab center for stroke recovery, but nobody was my age. The nurses were the physical therapists were the occupational therapists, but like, they were very helpful and they kind of knew what I was going through, but they didn't really know. So I've never really had that connection with other survivors who really understand the difficulties. So again, if I'm helping one other person, you know, I hope it's more, I'd love, I got to get better. <laughs> like I consider myself a content creator, but I've been really bad about connecting with other survivors. And I guess from my point of view, I don't want to be pushing the podcast, but I really, I want to help other people. And so I do have to be better about that. So it's, you know, part of asking myself why a lot this last week is like, why not? Why am I not doing this? What can I do to be better as a podcaster and sharing my story? Is it going on other podcasts? Is it just sharing more, more personal stuff? Like I share a lot on this podcast. I don't necessarily translate it into social and perhaps I should, and it's a worthwhile endeavor. 
And again, I struggle with, I don't want to seem <laughs> for a guy that's not worried about what other people think. I often worry a lot about what people think sometimes, which is hilarious to me. And I don't think I'm alone. So getting over that, it's really, I'm not sharing personal stuff for likes or laughs. Like I'm really, I, I just need to reset and reframe my state of mind when I'm sharing on social, especially with things related to this podcast and survivors in general. Again, whether it's brain injury, stroke, MS, like honestly, I'm starting to think like maybe I should talk about addiction more because really I don't think addiction directly led to my stroke, but you certainly could argue that being an alcoholic and a functional one working from home behind the computer. Like I was like, I don't think being an alcoholic directly led to my stroke, but it certainly helped. It certainly didn't hurt. <laughs> well, it definitely hurt me being an alcoholic, but and it certainly played a role in my stroke. Again, whether it was direct cause of my stroke, I don't believe so. And again, nobody knows the direct anything. Not even me. Like I, I'm being truthful. Like I've asked doctors, we've had conversations. It just, it seems like my stroke at 37 happened from maybe not taking the, uh, obviously being an alcoholic, I wasn't eating great. I wasn't taking care of myself the way I do now. So just a culmination of a lot of things really kind of, I hate to sound cliche, but it was the perfect storm. And by perfect storm, I mean awful, but like, you don't have a stroke at 37 without a culmination of things happening. And again, I feel very lucky to be alive. And so sharing that experience. And I think the other thing I struggle with, and I heard this in the episode of Bert with Brendan, is that like Bert was telling Brendan, he's, you know, very inspirational. And I wonder if other people who have been through things like this, and this is actually a question to any survivor out there, like, especially, you know, in the case where you may have had more control over your situation, you know, and you look back, you're like, well, if I didn't do this, if I had seek help for this, could I have stopped my own stroke? And yes, like now battling back, overcoming everything that, that has kind of slapped me in the, in the face, so to speak, with the stroke, with the MS, I continue to battle back. I'm continuing to improve my health. I'm continuing to be there as a father, as a husband be there for myself and my kids. So that might be inspirational to people, but sometimes I feel weird about it. And I don't know if I'm alone in that or if other people feel that it's like, I appreciate others feeling inspired and I, I feel good that what I'm doing is inspiring people. But on the other hand, it's like I sort of brought this upon myself. So there's a bit of shame in some regards. It's like, Oh man, I'm not inspiring. Like I'm just this guy that did a bunch of stuff wrong. Who is really trying to take ownership of the wrongs that he did mostly to myself. Like I, I, I'm sure in somewhere in there, and this is another thing I, I won't go into this episode, but I've been thinking like, you know, I talk to my wife a lot and I, I think she, she feels bad that she didn't see some of the signs, but I also feel bad because I was like hiding some of the things. Like I wasn't intentionally hiding it, but I was just drinking a lot towards the end and I wasn't asking for help. And I thought I had it under control, which clearly I did not. And again, I never hurt my way physically, but I just wonder if, if some of what I've done has taken a toll both on my inadvertently on my wife, on my kids, like, uh, all my family, like my sisters and my parents are no longer alive, but I just, I sort of had that realization this week, like, huh, like in a way, and I think I talked about this before, I was an alcoholic. And again, this goes back to the asking why or why not? And it's like, you know, I feel very lucky to be alive. As a stroke survivor, no matter how it happened, I definitely had a stroke. I definitely have MS. Like I am working every day to be, to express gratitude and thankfulness for being alive and having the people in my life still in my life and that I didn't do anything devastatingly horrible. 
to a level that like there is no longer anybody around. But on the flip side, and again, I think about this is like, I immediately stopped drinking, like had the stroke. That was the end of drinking. It's like I haven't smoked or drank since December 23rd, 2019. I mean, it's probably two, two days before I think I went into the hospital. So let's say like December 20th, 2019 is probably the last time I drank or smoked a cigarette. Then went into the hospital and then have never had anything since. You know, and, and some of that, sometimes that feels like cheating. It's, <laughs> but on the other hand, if you've had a stroke or know somebody who's been through a stroke in your life, you know, it is definitely not cheating. I definitely would rather be in 12 step than have had the stroke. And now as a result, medications dealing with all the residual effects of stroke financially, physically, mentally. 12 step would have been a nice, nicer route <laughs> to to really avoid all the stroke stuff. However, I'm now asking myself, I wonder if there might be some benefit to like, even though I haven't had a sip of alcohol since stroke, would there be a benefit of going back and going through the 12 steps? And that's a conversation for another day, but it's one of the things that's come out of asking myself why or why not, you know? And again, I'm just trying to be honest about my situation and how does it affect other people? It, I, it may not. You may be a stroke survivor that just had a stroke, like for other reasons. I, I, you know, I'm not saying mine was directly tied to alcohol, but it definitely played a role. You know, I was doing a lot of unhealthy things, which a lot of stroke survivors, you know, I think if we're being honest with ourselves and we're looking back, it's like, well, you know, whatever the the research says. I don't, I, the numbers always seem off to me, but let's say, let's say 30% of strokes are preventable, completely preventable. That's probably fair, right? Because th- probably 30% of stroke survivors, you know, if we're being honest, weren't exercising, weren't living a healthy lifestyle, you know, could make significant changes, could have made them earlier so that they didn't become a stroke survivor. Hopefully now they're taking advantage of the fact that they did not you know, and fortunately did not pass away. So they survived the stroke. So they're able to call themselves a stroke survivor and they're able to correct the mistakes they didn't correct earlier, which is very difficult to not, I'm not minimizing that. I'm not, I'm just saying, you know, that taking, (laughs) going through a stroke, you know, being able to have that second chance in life and really figuring out how to navigate it is a little difficult. That's why this podcast exists. And it's hopefully to share stories and to, even if you are a survivor and you're listening and you haven't necessarily made all the corrections that you want to make, hopefully you're on the right path to making those changes in your life. And really taking advantage of the fact that you're able to, because some people are not so lucky. And that's really what this podcast is all about, is really helping people help themselves. I don't have all the exact answers for your situation, but again, asking yourself why or why not when it comes to certain things that you want to do or think you've always thought you wanted to do. Like, honestly, I'll just say this. The why not thing comes from me watching Bert cast and thinking, God, I love Bert. He's this great comedian. I'm thinking about all the comedians that I see on that show and that I've seen in the past throughout my life, like whether it's in person at comedy clubs, comedy shows, back when I did improv and comedy stand up in Miami, a very amateur hour, but like, why didn't I continue that? And I didn't continue that because I didn't believe in myself enough and I just kept listening to other people. And that's really where I'm going with this podcast episode is like, ask yourself, why do you want to do a thing? And why aren't you doing the thing that you want to do? Why not you? <laughs> if you want to do something in life, whether it's for fun, whether it's a job, like, why not? And I feel like I did it at first, but I got uncomfortable again. And now I'm really kind of not mad at myself, but I'm just pushing myself harder now. And maybe now I'm just ready to push myself to that next level really take ownership and like, yeah, why the fuck not? Like there's so many people when it comes to podcasting, they have so many opinions like, okay, listen, 
this may not be the best show in the world, but I want to get better, right? And I want to be a better podcaster and I want to have fun. And sometimes this podcast, honestly, is very heavy and I want to help people. So again, I'm going to continue doing this podcast, but one of the announcements I want to make on this <laughs> episode 22 of Lovable Survivors is that I'm bringing the Lovable Idiot podcast back. And I'm doing that because I want to get better at doing podcasts and video and put it on YouTube. And while this podcast might be great for that, I don't know. I kind of want to try it with the old lovable idiot. And one of the things I want to do there is go back to having fun. And I do have fun with this podcast, but it is also very heavy. And I think for somebody like me, it's clear that podcasting is, you know, more my forte than writing every day as a stroke survivor who's got some limitations when it comes to typing. There are tools out there. I am making progress, but I just want to go back to having a fun hobby and I love this podcast I love what I'm doing I believe in it long term this is not a short term play that's why you don't hear sponsor ads every two seconds like they're not billions of, of stroke survivors listening to this podcast yet I can do better I can be better about outreach getting people to listen I can tighten up the show all those things but I also I've been missing the suit like, like my hope is that by bringing back global idiot podcast which is hopefully going to start next week is that i'm just gonna have fun with that podcast right and that can go absolutely nowhere and by having fun on another show of mine a separate podcast i'm hoping that it kind of like intertwines with this one where there's more crossover and i'm bringing a lot more fun because i, I believe we can be serious and fun and not everybody can do it it's just honestly, I think it's a special skill set that not everybody has. Like some people are great at being jackasses and being hilarious. And some people are great at being hilarious, but also being serious. And I don't know if they belong on the same show, but my hope is that I can sort of combine them. And I'll be honest again, you know, a lot of Bert cast and Bert has had some other podcasts. I mean, now he's got Leanne's got wife of the parties. He's got a couple of shows on his channel and it just inspired me to like, yeah, wait, why am I listening to everybody else? <laughs> like I've had a stroke. I'm six foot eight. I'm 325 pounds. I'm not saying don't listen to people, but sometimes I get in my own head and I listen to other people and I'm like, wait, what am I doing? Until another six, eight motherfucker comes up, and tells me, Hey, I'm a six, eight guy that's had a stroke and I like comedy and I, I do this and I do this and I do this. And you, sh it's like, why am I listening to other people? Honestly, because there's not a lot of people like me. And then, I don't know exactly where I'm going with it, but I, I just want to let you know, I'm bringing back global idiots. I'll be starting that up hopefully next week, M maybe tops two weeks. I'm definitely still working on a couple of things. This is another conversation I've had with myself about why and why not. There's a couple of things that you've heard me talk about on this podcast. They're all coming to fruition. I've been a little bit bad about kind of doing a thing, doing 80% of the work, but I haven't really finished it. So I'm going to kind of finish these things back up. I'm going to release the email course for survivors, for people that want to improve their breathing, because I feel like that's a real thing that is really going to be useful and helpful for people and whether it brings them to this podcast or the lovable idiot. I mean, you, you would think breathing and lovable idiot, but have nothing to do with each other. But again, there's no reason why they can't because no matter what you do in life, breathing is a thing. Breathing is a helpful thing. People don't know about it so much like to be 39 last year and realize that I had never really focused on my breathing, you know, and again, Bert shows you on his podcast. He can talk about funny things. He can talk about drinking. He can talk about smoking weed. He can do hilarious shows like, the cabin, but he can also have great guests on his podcast. He's shown he's an amazing podcaster. He's a movie star now. Like he just, you know, he just released the machine just came out. Like he does a lot of things and he's really great at them. And, uh, you know, he's just inspirational to me because it shows me that you can do a lot of things. You can go through ups and downs in life and you hit stumbles and roadblocks, but you can. I think the major lesson takeaway here is ask yourself why or why not really embracing those answers and those questions. And if you want to get to the bottom of things, asking why is a great way to ask yourself why or why not to really get to the root of things you want to do as an individual. You know, 
And it doesn't have to just be because you're a survivor, but like I specifically think with stroke survivors and brain injury survivors, given that second opportunity at life, like really the power of asking why or why not is super helpful when you're trying to like just live your life and have fun doing it. So yeah, just don't underestimate that. So again, I don't have any, I just, I'm going to recommend a book, but it's again, I recommend the Burt Bert cast. If you're a fan of YouTube, definitely watch it. He's got a lot of good guests. He just revamped his studio for like the 18th time, which I love because now I feel justified because I've also done five or six different office moves in my own house, different spaces within my house in the last three years. I must have moved my office five or six times. And yeah, I finally feel pretty settled, but already looking at it like, man, I could do better. <laughs> So yeah, again, Birdcast is great. Definitely watch that. Tons of good episodes. You know, he releases about one or two a week. A couple that I really like. Dane Cook was a really good episode. I know not everybody's a fan of Dane Cook, but I really enjoyed it. I think it was, you know, Dane is now 50, like Bert, so... You know, I think as we get older, we get a little wiser, we grow up. And I think there was a lot of good takeaways with Dane on his episode. Liver King was interesting. I was not aware of Liver King, although apparently my kids were from YouTube, but I was not. I really enjoyed that. It's a little different, but not bad. And then Brandon Novak, great episode, especially if you know somebody who's struggling with alcohol or drugs or addiction of any kind. Highly recommended. I'm going to watch it again this weekend. And for old time's sake, I started watching Entourage. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's funny because I didn't realize Entourage started in 2004. And we all had flip phones still back in that day. So that was kind of, I feel like I'm reliving my 20s watching Entourage and flip phones. It's hilarious, but kind of a good show if you just want to take your mind off all the heavy stuff in life. Anyways, I hope you found this episode valuable. Remember, ask yourself why or why not. Don't let fears limit you in life. Yeah, I mean, I know it's easier said than done sometimes, but it's a good reminder that you've been given a second chance in life as a survivor. Whether, again, whatever you're a survivor from, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're, hopefully you're not even a survivor, honestly. But again, ask yourself why not. Question, th- you know, question that status quo. And if you think you want to do it, give it a shot. You know, failure is a great teacher. So even if you you think you'll be a great comedian and you want to practice stand up and you're 40 years old like myself, like just go for it, you know, learn from it if you want to get better. But you got to try, you got to play the game. If you want to do it, go after it. You know, I could say a million things about that, but I think... We'll leave it there for episode 22 of the Lovelace of our podcast and bye.